My Gavanan Melonine, and well met indeed. I am Arachir Galadirathan, and welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition. You are watching the first of the tournament games. Now, this is going to track the progress of the tournament that we organized when I recreated the Order of the Swan, which is just this fancy name for the Discord server that accompanies my YouTube channel. It's where we organize all of our games, and every now and then you can ask me questions if you like or whenever you like. But uh, link to the Discord is in the description. But when we set the Discord up a few months back, last sort of October time, uh, or it might have been earlier in that, September even, we ran a competition we ran a tournament in age of empires 2 definitive edition and this little mini series here is going to track mine and my teammates progress to as far as we get and then ultimately the tournament itself and this is game number one and i can't believe it's working it has taken me two and a half hours hours to get to this point, to get the bloody replay thing to work. Oh, goods above. This game is from October 2021. It is now March 2022. And to get this thing to work has been a ball ache. But anyway, let's bloody well plow on. Game number one, the teams. I am almost always grey. You will always see me as grey. I know some people find it difficult to see, but I'm grey. I'm playing as the Magyars. My teammate is Kaylin. Kaylin's playing as the Vikings in this one. Uh, Kaylin is much better at the game than me. I am the weaker of the two in the team. As the tournament was created by Matt primarily. Well, I, um, the Discord set it up, but Matt did all the work. He really did. It was created by Matt. And he went through and he tried to rank everyone's skill level and then tried to assign teammates based on skill. So no one team would have a huge advantage or a huge disadvantage. Uh, and in my team, I'm the weaker and Kaylin is the stronger. Uh, I'll talk more about just general things, but our opponents in red, we have Sheep Whisperer, who is good at the game and is the stronger of the two in this team. He's playing as the Magyars as well. And then we have Dunker Biscuit, or Dunker, because he's known in Discord, who's also good. This is not a game with extremely high-level players allied with lower-level players, as you will see through this series. This is a game of sort of middling players grouped together, with some shining above with Kaylin and, and Sheep Whisperer. And others, not so. Me and Dunkirk. <laughs> uh, I've opted not to use Capture Age because I just don't like it very much. And we're not casting pro games here, so it's just not important to my mind. So we're going to stick with the standard feature. If you want to know what Kalen sounds like, he appeared in the very latest live stream of Age of Empires, which went up last week or so, around the 20th, 28th or something of March 2022. The, game, the video was called The Slog, and Kalen was one of the players in it. He survived almost to the end. So, this is it. <laughs> the tournament. There are no real rules to the tournament at all. It was simply 2v2s right through to the end. Um, and each round was a best of three. And each team got to choose one of their uh, A map as their home map. And then they would choose, uh, then there was a, a pre-ordained third map if it went to a third game. There was a map that was used by everyone, which is Hideout. This map was chosen by Sheep Whisperer and Dunkirk, and I can't remember the name of it. Um, it's because, as you can see, it's just it's just a sort of general map, very Arabia-esque in its design. Ugh, who I hate Arabia? <laughs> oh, we can turn the score on. I don't know if any of my buttons are going to work because getting this replay thing, I dread to even press a button, to be honest. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. It's taken so long to get it to work. Right, so I'm playing as the Magyars and so is Sheep Whisperer, we're, but we're light cavalry factions. You can see that they are walling up and I am not indicative of my poor skill level. Kaden also deciding at this point not to bother with the walls either. He's going to plough on with a nice open world. Dunkirk also walling up right to the end, making sure he can't be raided. The scout's running through. We'll keep it sped up until any actual action kicks in. I appreciate some of you will want to analyse this early stages and see what's happening, but everyone uses very, very sort of standard, similar build type orders. Most people use build orders, but not everyone. Uh, going up to the feudal age there, but Sheep Whisperer queued it, but it's not moving. Ah, because he's going for villagers first. Oh, no, 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 sorry. <laughs> he's already there. <laughs> I don't have this on when we play the... Um, in fact, I don't, I don't reckon... Maybe in... 
why is that not there in Diplo, I wonder? But anyway, irrelevant. They are going for walls. Dunkirk is playing as the Mines, which is an archer sieve. And the Vikings, of course, at this time of the game, long before the famed infantry patch of Age of Empires 2, uh, I believe at this point they still have relatively viable archers, uh, whereas their archers have since been um, knocked down a peg or two. I don't bother with walls at all, as you can see. Uh, Kaelin starts to soft wall around himself as well from the front lines. Dunkirk is going for a full wall right to the end. But um, Kaelin tries to stop that with scout cavalry. Uh, and you'll note that I'm about to be raided by the scout cavalry coming in of Sheep Whisperer. And it gets almost all of my <laughs> lumber. He moves out and kills then a couple of my gold miners as well, but not before I get my mining camp up. I hope you don't mind if I keep it at the times two speed. You're not going to see any actions here which uh, decry real skill. Just taking our uh, frustrations out on the bear. All right, so I'm knocked back a right peg or two. We lose a hell of a lot of villagers, but Kaelin rushes in against Dunkirk with an archer rush long before Dunkirk is ready. And his archers get through the wall because, of course, palisade walls are easy to break through. Sheep Whisperer starts walling himself in entirely as well, putting a market at the back, and he's going for a palisade right around the base. I still don't bother with the walls. We just go back to Kay go back to doing what we were doing. <laughs> Kaelin's using his archers to desperately seek out any villagers that he can, and he finds some on that southern edge there and takes all of them down. The villagers down here sadly have walled themselves in to their own death. Not realizing that's an odd choice. That's a very odd choice. My scout cavalry goes a routing around on the um, in Sheep Whisperer, looking for anywhere to get through, but he's put walls around the palisades. We move through to there to try and see if we can get in. All the while, Kaelin's still just keeping Dunkirk off of the gold that he has the mining camp next to, so he's going to have to go somewhere else for his gold, and his lumberjacks move to his eastern side. My scouts um, pull away from the wall. We don't bother pushing through. You'll note from score-wise, Kaelin is currently dominating, but that, of course, comes down primarily to his having attacked, and he's brought in a ton of archers to assist. Uh, and now he's going to go looking for more villagers as he moves around. Just as Sheep Whisperer then comes back to hit me as well, I managed to actually protect my villagers up there. And Kaelin finds the archers, but not before they get a tower up, and he pulls his archers away. Finds the archers, finds the villagers. He pulls them away, but he does go chasing down those troops, but he does lose an archer or two to pay for that. My scout cavalry now in purely defensive mode as I continue to not bother building walls. Uh, remember, this is game number one. At this point, Kaelin and I had played a couple of... In fact, you've seen our warm-up game. I put that up on the channel, if memory serves, actually, some time ago. Uh, against randomers on the internet, we just did a random uh, unranked, I think it was. Uh, so we've had one or two warm-up games and that is it i have come from a complete background of non-competitive i play age of empires purely for a laugh i do not care about microing about being intensely accurate about wasted resources anything like that you're what you're going to see from me is as you see on the channel and have done for all these past years mediocrity whereas kaylin is actually good he plays competitively if i can get up to the late game i can give uh, I can at least then hold my own against Kaelin, but in the early game, I can't beat any of these people really on my own. Sheep Whisperer hits the castle edge. Oh, we haven't got the timer up, have we? Oh, and I can't remember what the button is. And if I press buttons now, I might end up muting myself, so I'm just going to leave that off. It doesn't matter too much, does it? My scout cavalry runs into his and gets killed off, so we just lose all the scout cavalry we've got. I get to the castle edge now as well. Kaelin follows suit, and Dunkirk isn't there yet. He hasn't queued it up either, as you can see. But that is not um, unexpected because, of course, Dunkirk has had to push back numerous s raids from uh, Kaelin. I then transition into some knights to get out against that scout cavalry. And as you can see, one knight can deal with about five light cav on his own. So we quickly send that fool on his way. Kaelin's archers go in again and start just killing more of Dunkirk's villages. Dunkirk's in a really bad way at the moment. But between Sheep Whisperer and I, Sheep Whisperer has the best of me. I've managed to defend myself fairly well. Not all that well. I've lost a lot of villagers. Hence why the score is so low compared to the other two, Sheep and Kaelin. Kaelin still just probing for weakness. And then I send my scouts in to deal with um, Sheep. But because, again, Sheep is a person who plays this game competitively. He knew that I was transitioning into scale, into knights. So he started getting out some pikemen to counter them. 
Uh, Kaelin then sends in even siege equipment against Dunkirk before Dunkirk can get up to the castle age. He starts losing his military. Sheep Whisperer is forced to come over and assist because Dunkirk just doesn't have anything. Which buys me some time to move forward if <laughs> we can build a castle outside his place. <laughs> because why bloody not, I ask you. And then and then we pop down a university right next to the castle so that we can get <laughs> we can get crenellations. Because there's nothing more important than being able to shoot things at the bottom of your castle. And people deride me for this. In fact, this university being built next to the castle and acting as a sort of defence has been the has made me something of a laughing stock for a while people have sort of forgotten about it now but this may bring it back into their memory but the defensive university is a strategy you don't often see in age of empires but i'm i'm making it a thing right dunkirk is now really really up against it Caden, as you can see has a horde of archers he's not been tested or raided at any stage he's got siege in Caden in, in dunkirk's base and dunkirk has now got to contend with siege and, and he just doesn't have any answer to this as you can see his town center then goes down just as sheep whisperer then comes and raids my villagers and i don't notice so it takes me too long to get the villagers in the knights and the light cavalry come back but the town center does a wonder on them and my castle then keeps them pinned down outside their base where i then start setting up wood cutting ah as a big middle finger to my enemy i start harvesting their trees instead of my own he keeps trying to raid my villagers at home, but all the while, of course, Dunkirk is totally out of this game. Now, the only downside with me having waited six months to record these is that I do not really recall what was what was being said during the game. Of course, we were in different voice channels when these games were played so that people could strategize and talk to their ally without the other team knowing what's being said. Uh, and that is a standard. Uh, but after the game, we talked about it and everyone discussed sort of what happened. And there were people watching these games who then discussed it as well. So, But I don't really recall the patter after the game, I'm afraid. So I don't know if Dunkirk and Sheep Whisper had a fundamental miscommunication here or what happened. But I feel like Sheep Whisper took the view that I was enough of a threat that if he ignored me, then it would just be two... It would just give two against one. Whereas he's kind of hoping that if he can kill me before Dunkirk is entirely defeated, then he might be in a good position to deal with Caelan. But Dunkirk manages to squeeze out Castle Age just as Sheep Whisperer and Caelan are going to Imperial. Of course, I am not as yet because I am still reeling from the raids that have come against me. Sheep Whisperer trying desperately to raid with that small army that he has uh, as we now have a castle standoff just outside our bases and Dunkirk is now fully withdrawn to his secondary town center he's built over there. His villager numbers are very low indeed. And Sheep goes in to try and raid Kaelin's base instead. Kaelin gets the villagers back, starts defending himself. And then the Imperial Age hits. Sheep Whisperer comes back to try and hit my base. He then prepares ultimately for the attack that's going to come on him. Dunker gets some siege out to deal with uh, Kaelin's rams. A wise choice as the armies continue to mill about in the middle, really. Sheep comes in again to disrupt me. He's desperate to get me out so that he can then be on a level footing with Dung, uh, with Kaelin, sorry. The fray, I'm going to call people the wrong names over and over and over, but it's just the natural way of things. All right, as he's now in the Imperial Age, he's got Trebs up, and that's going to start hitting me, but Dunkirk is now almost completely gone. The other town centre that he built for himself is taken down, there's a castle in his base, just as another big middle finger. Troops they're not doing out. And Sheep Whisperer brings his army back to try and deal with Kaelin. But the number of archers that he now has. And he manages to get into Sheep Whisperer's base where there's a gap in the wall where the trees fell. I'd moved my forces forward and built a castle outside his base. Because why not? Dunkirk resigns quite understandably, as you know, goes down to about four villagers. And Kaelin takes out the hordes and Sheep Whisperer resigns with him. So game number one of round number one goes to Galu and Kaelin. Thank you very much. Now, remember, it's a best of three. So there is another game, possibly a third to come. And I'm going to do them all in this video. But let's just have a quick look at the stats for this one just to show it off. 
So Kaylin dominated, as you saw. Sheep Whisperer couldn't get me down quick enough before Kaylin was able to defeat, defeat Dunkirk. That was their home map as well, remember? So the next map is Kaylin and Mai's choice. Militarily, Kaylin killing 100. I killed 90 and Sheep killed 72. So I defended well enough. I held long enough that Kaylin was able to defeat Dunkirk. And uh, that allowed then, obviously, it to turn into a 2v1 situation. But I struck back a little, even if I'm on... Even if unorthodoxly with a castle drop. <laughs> right, so I did cut that last bit out because otherwise you'll see, you might be able to see who wins. So we then go to mine and Kaylin's home map and it is Nomad. And we we pinged away at the beginning to say where we were going to start. Uh, and I'm going to be down here on the southern tip of the island. Kaylin um, is over in the west and annoyingly is now red, which doesn't help things. I am always grey. So if you're ever looking for how not to play, just look for the grey and follow what you see. So Kaelin's gone as red. His town centre is over in the east, but he built a dock where his starting villager was in the west. Uh, Sheep Whisperer this time is yellow, whereas obviously Dunkirk was yellow last time. And this time Dunkirk is teal. So Dunkirk is Lithuanian this time, a cavalry sieve that relies heavily on relics. They do also get some good advantages in the early game because they get extra food. Sheep Whisperer this time is Vietnamese. Again, uh, not again, an archer sieve. Well, I suppose that's what I was going with. Again, an archer sieve. And the Vietnamese, of course, are a very good anti-archer sieve as well with a uh, with a Huskar-like unit that fires arrows instead. Their unique unit is an anti-archer archer. Kaelin is playing as the Persians, starting away in the east. And this time I am the Italians. The beauty of Nomad and the reason we chose it was we thought that... Most people that would play this competitive game modes or play these competitive style game modes may not play very much Nomad. And we also banked on the theory that it would completely throw off any new players entirely. So they would log into Nomad and think, what the bloody hell do I do here? How do I play? What do I do? Now, the chief thing really with Nomad is using the fish as early as possible to fish, 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 fish uh, and get as much food as you can from the sea. Uh, and that's something that, as you can see straight away, Dunkirk takes a lot longer to do. Uh, and that puts him back a little. Uh, but position-wise, they are at least close together so they can support one another, whereas you'll note Kaylin and I are much further apart. You'll also note that the <laughs> errors of the first game have, always, have already <laughs> been handled. And we have this time started to actually put a wall together. Kaylin has gone up to the Feudal Age very, very quickly and is also sort of outwardly walling himself in there. Where scouting around takes place. I'm not going to bother with the fog of war. It's only a, a light-hearted tournament. Scouting has already taken place and we know where everyone is. Dunkirk starts walling himself in and Kaelin goes in to try and stop that. Scout cavalry in the early game is not actually very good and villagers will kill scouts. So you have to be very careful with them. I've walled in that bit but not bothered with anything else. And as you can see I've then even gone further afield. <laughs> I may get up to the Feudal Age, last to do so, and Kaelin then gets up to Castle very, very quickly indeed as well. He takes down uh, Sheep Whisperer Advanced Tower. I'm not really sure what the purpose of that was. Uh, sorry, I've called them the wrong way already. I knew I was going to do that because of the colours. Dunkirk is teal, Sheep is yellow. Uh, let's drop it down. So this time the two better players are next to each other and the two lower players are next to each other. So it's going to be interesting to see how it is handled. Caden absolutely going ham on forests, uh, on his forest there, with very few on food, obviously owing to the docks. Italians, of course, get cheaper fishing ships, so we're able to fish better than most. Hence why, at the moment, I don't have even a farm to my name, because the fish is giving me everything that I need. Let's speed it back up as the two nations prepare to fight. So, they're both in the Castle Age, and uh, Dunkirk and myself... Uh, no, sorry. Sheep Whisperer and myself are in the Feudal Age. Dunkirk's already gone up to the Castle Age. He's trying to act quicker than he did in the, in the game before. And he's praying, of course, that he won't be rushed out. As he was with Kaelin in the previous iteration. Sheep Whisperer sending out troops into the land, into the no-man's land. In the demilitarized zone between the wall and the uh, edge of Kaelin's base. And Kaelin transitioning completely into knights very, very early. I'm going to standard archers, although, of course, as you can see, I'm slow and behind. But I have gone up to the castle age. The second town centre coming up slightly north of my initial position. 
Kaelin sends his knights back north, and he is scouting for any weaknesses in Sheep Whisperer's line. He notes the pikemen that come out, and he tanks the damage from them and takes down the military. Scoots around the side of the houses being built and takes down the villagers that are trying to get them up. And at that point, Dunkirk sends whatever knights he has over as well, which will be enough to at least help. That'll take down a few of the knights. But Kaelin then pumps out more. And of course, Sheep Whisperer is only just now researching the Castle Age. So there's a window of time here where Kaelin has a real upper hand. And Dunkirk being forced to focus in the north and help Sheep Whisperer will allow me and buy me some time as well. Sheep pulls his villagers back to take out the knights, but more knights coming in from the south. The knight hordes begin to scour the island. This time I'm doing terribly, really. Uh, but Sheep Whisperer, unfortunately, the loss of his military sees his score fall flat. Um, and then the knights hit the gold in the north there. Dunga's got a nice little tight-knit base. The trees provide a lot of protection for him, which is very helpful. And again, the <laughs> forward university. It just protects one side of the castle. The uh, siege workshop is in much the same vein. This time I actually have gone into Genoese crossbows because everyone's going into knights and I'm already at the castle age. I haven't raided anyone. I haven't gone early with my aggression. So why not just get some Genoese and assist in that regard? Kaelin has completely denied that gold in the north. Sheep Whisperer pulls the villagers back to try and stop and more knights come through in the south and it's really looking grim for sheep. He has nothing to counter the hordes of knights that have come for him. Oh, and earlier, sorry, I said that Sheep Whisperer built his dock too late. Uh, and I, but I said that was Dunkirk. And again, that was me getting the colours wrong. Dunkirk did build ships immediately and did start um, did start fishing. As Kaelin then floods into Sheep Whisperer's base. Oh, and so many knights. So, so many knights. <laughs> I'm only just now starting to build a little military. Got some siege up, got some Genoese. As Kaelin's doing all the heavy lifting and basically beating these people on his own. He finds Dunkirk's knights, but he toddles off. There's no relics in Dunkirk's monastery just yet, so his knights have standard attack. The knight hordes meet in the fields outside of Dunkirk's town centre. Sheep Whisperer is thankful for the, for the brief reprieve that he is given, and he transitions into pikes to deal with the knight hordes. Kaelin denying that relic so that the Lithuanians won't get an attack bonus. And then he's pushed back by the virtue of the town centre. My siege forces move forward. And we start taking down Dunkirk's castle. Still, no real walls, no fields. I've got villagers standing around doing nothing. <laughs> it's a text oh, we built some walls this time. We did build walls on that side. Not that that matters in any way. Oh, Dunkirk's got a second town centre out, right out on the edge there. And Kaelin is starting... Oh, Kaelin. Sheep Whisperer is starting to claw his way back in. The knights that Kaelin sent into Dunkirk's base trade and make their way out. But a number of them in the north there, but they don't stop that relic going in. But the monk does go down. Now again, the knight's just probing, seeing what they can do. Kaelin's base virtually very, very small, as his focus, of course, has been on his assault. All fish in this has been completely free at all stages. No one ever attacked anyone's fish. So we all had an equal um, footing as far as uh, food goes. Freedom to fish. <laughs> and then, with Dunkirk's attention elsewhere, my siege is able to take down his castle quite handily. As then my Genoese army moves in. Oh, he comes back and targets the Manganels. It's a little too late and I think that ram's going to take the castle down. Kaelin moving back on Sheep Whisperer now, but his path into the base has been blocked. He's got to go around the trees, but he does so and his knights get into that western edge. He's just continually to keep, he's continuing to keep Sheep completely engaged. I pop a castle down on top of Dunkirk's castle because I had the stone and why not? And uh, my siege moves in and rolls up into Dunkirk's base. Dunkirk resigns, Kaelin GG in reply, and Sheep Whisperer resigns as well. And there you go. That is the first taste of the replays of these like of the tournament games. That was about 24 minutes here, yeah, that's not too bad, because um, there are a lot of these rounds that went for three. And in 
so um, there will be the next ones will be longer. But there we are, absolutely aided by Kaylin there. Kaylin carried me completely through round number one. Sheep Whisperer, unfortunately, in that round was targeted by the knights and wasn't able to counter them. And it pretty much went downhill from the moment the knights went through his wall. His pikes weren't up to the task. Dunkirk was able to assist with some knights, but then the, the his attention being so firmly on Kaylin and trying to stop the cavalry allowed me to build up and then just move in. Uh, with an army that then they couldn't counter because by this point of the game unless anyone else has siege in a in a game like this where Kaylin has the Vietnamese player under control and the Lithuanian player hasn't been able to get any siege my small army of Genoese and the Manganel are able to deal with pretty much anything they try and bring out so uh, there's not much more that they can do but it's Kaylin that won it do not get me wrong Kaylin absolutely dominated this and in this game and in the one before it I haven't been particularly good but my quality does ramp up a little as we go through. There's some moments where Gallo actually steps up and plays these games. I killed seven units and Kaylin killed 84. That's outrageous. Um, again, I'll just give you a quick flick through these so you can have a read of them if you want. You'll note how far ahead he was in terms of food on, the, on all of us. Double everyone else's food collection. Even mine and I wasn't even raided. How do people do that? Technology-wise, it just shows you when everyone got out before the Imperial Age even clocks in. And societal, there's those stats for that. And then finally, the timeline, if you're interested in seeing that. So there you go. Round number one. Gallo and Kaelin progress and Dunkirk and Sheep are out. And we go on to round two. And round two will be brought to you at a later date. Ideally, next week. You're going to get one a week. Provided I can get that bloody replay system to work, you're going to get one a week. But that concludes round number one. And let's progress to round number two next time. And until then, everyone, thank you very much for watching. Navair den perimad melonin. Farewell. Two and a half hours it has taken me to get this to work. <laughs> two, two and a half hours. I finished work even earlier today and it didn't matter. <laughs> <laughs>